exactly. <laughs> uh, so you, you mentioned there about uh, Bermuda uh, and the uh, Beyond Rugby um, charity that you set up. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And as well as uh, I can see you're wearing a Memphis Inner City rugby shirt. Um, tell us more about those projects and, and what, uh, the work that's going into them. Yeah, thanks. I'd love to. I was down in uh, Cape Town 2010 for the Soccer Football World Cup. And I remember the Vuvuzelas were terrible back then, the worst <laughs> things ever invented. So I was in the bar trying to get the Vuvuzelas out of my ear and ha having a bunch of beers. And I, I basically, all I remember was talking to a guy with cauliflowered ears. So I knew it was either a <laughs> MMA guy or a rugby guy. I wasn't <laughs> sure which one. And the next morning my phone rang and I thought, oh my goodness, I must have promised that guy I would do something with him. And it was Nick Keller, the founder of Beyond Sports out of London. And, he, and I said, what did I promise you I'd do? He said, you promised me we'd go to the shanty town. I said, can't we just go to the wharf and get robbed? It'd be so much easier. It would take up our whole day. And he said, no, we're going to visit a sports program, the Mighty Milers that uses sport to help kids get out of poverty areas and get them educated and kind of gets a carrot to get them in so they can get them job skills. And I said, man, that sounds awesome. So we went out and visited this shanty town. And I saw how sport can transform lives. And I thought this is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And so I was just moved to Bermuda and I'd seen all the problems with the gangs there, the murders, the, the knifings, the, the different problems they had, the dropout rate in schools. So I called Nick and I said, I'd love to start up a sports program like I saw in Cape Town and do something for these inner city, these, not inner city, same low income type kids. Yeah. And he said, the perfect sport is rugby. And I said, well, I, I love rugby. I think it's a wonderful sport. I'd love to do something like that. So that's how the whole idea kind of got started. And we took uh, Bermuda from – we're not sure what the dropout rate was because like a lot of governments, they fudge the numbers. But it was significantly high in the low-income areas. Our kids we worked with, we had a 100% graduation rate out of these kids. The kids wow, were not in gangs. The kids were not getting incarcerated. Uh, the first day we had rugby, one of the kids that was going to be in our, our program – got murdered uh, coming, uh, just coming to the program. You know, we had a lot of trouble. We had a lot of issues, but the rugby was the one thing that kind of transformed uh, these kids that were, that were kind of neglected and kind of left out. Now rugby is in all the public schools in Bermuda. It's part of the curriculum. Uh, and then through that, I found a group out of Memphis Center City Rugby, uh, Shane Young, who just does an incredible job there working with inner city kids. That's amazing. That's absolutely brilliant. So what, what's your involvement in that? Are you just guiding them through or do you, are you a bit more hands-on? Do you, do you pass? I wish I was a, I wish I was a coach. I don't know enough about it and I, and I don't live in Memphis, so I, I'm not qualified to do either, but I mean, I'd love to just be working with those kids every single day, but living in DC, obviously I can't. And I'm not sure I'm even qualified to do what Shane Young does, not what he does, but even, what the coaches yeah. do they, they they do a wonderful job with those kids i would love to be there working daily with them i'm on the board there with for shane i help with fundraisers and so i always say we but it's really they you know it's really <laughs> shane and his group that are doing this incredible work let me give you a little stat here from yeah, for memphis please. it's one of the worst child uh, poverty areas in the united states there's a 60 percent dropout rate among kids that are in that low income area in Memphis inner city rugby, those same kids are not only graduating at 100%, but 100% of those kids are going somewhere after uh, high school, either college, military, or trade school. I mean, they're, they're completely changing the inner city there. It's just a wonderful program. I'm so proud to be associated with it. That's amazing. That really is amazing. And, and you know, I hope the work continues, and I'm sure it will even in these sort of troubled times in, in America. I'm sure you know, rugby can be the thing that, brings people together and um no, yeah and right now there's not much rugby going on you know because of social distancing because of covid so shane young has, has transformed this program in fact we got a board meeting this week i can't wait to hear all the updates they're doing incredible work down there now with remote learning so when you have schools that are no longer in session because of the pandemic these kids who are in the, the inner city who are in the low-income areas they're not able to go to school uh, because of the pandemic, but they're not able to go to school remotely either. They don't have computers. Yeah. They don't have Wi-Fi. So Shane arranged for uh, to set up a learning center, Teach for America, donated a room. Mike Novogratz, the hedge fund billionaire, incredibly philanthropic guy, started a great program, Beat the Streets, out of New York and Philadelphia and several different programs, donated money for the computers. 
uh, and she now has got these young kids who come in there. They also give them a little food because a lot of these kids, the only meal they got during the day was at school. And so you're helping these kids not lose an entire generation because the problem right now, at least in America, with school shut down, those kids who don't have that remote learning because of where they are and where they live, you can lose an entire generation. So they've transformed at least temporarily from a rugby program, still doing a little rugby stuff, just kind of here and there, but most yeah. of it is remote learning to make sure these kids aren't lost and fall through the cracks because of this pandemic. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that quite could quite easily happen at the moment if we've got nothing to to sort of guide them through life as we know it at the moment then uh yeah that's when things tend to sort of become awry um so what uh, let's go back to rugby a little bit um what are your thoughts on the state of the game in america as you said it's, it's now in public schools in places like bermuda is it is it growing at, at school and university level it's hard to say. You know, people always talk about it's the fastest growing sport in America. I'm not sure if it is or not. People have debated whether these numbers are legit or not. I 